My name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of, the, out of this book here. GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The book contains 230 problem solving questions. It has 174 data sufficiency questions. We have already solved every single math problem from this book. If you are interested in watching any of the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Right now we are in the process of redoing the problems and we are on page number 182. Please turn to it. Page number 182. The very first problem that you see there on the page number 209. Number 209. Let's see what it has to say. In number 209, we are told that we have some quantity x, which we are told does not equal 0. Obviously, somewhere down the road, they are dividing it by x, and if you cannot divide, we'll get to that in a second. And we are also told that x does not equal 1. Here is the expression. The expression that is given to us is x plus 1 over x minus 1 whole squared. What we are being asked here, by the way, this is an expression, this is not an equation. People sometimes refer to something like this as an equation. It is not an equation. The equation, for example, a plus 3b, a plus 3b, this is an expression. This is not an equation. An equation is so called because an equation equates to quantity. So if we are told that a plus 3b equals 7, then it's an equation. Then now it's an equation. But without the equal sign, it is just an expression. Our job is to rewrite this expression so that we replace replace x by 1 over x. Whatever we, whatever we see x, our job is to replace it with 1 over x and simply give the resulting expression. The question is if you were to do that, what will be the resulting expression? That's all. As you can see, it's an algebra problem. And as you know by now, what we do with the algebraic problem. When you deal with the problem, the, when you come across a problem, there's an algebra problem in the exam. As always, you have two choices. One, one choice is to solve this algebra problem as it is meant to be solved, which is in a very classical way, very traditional way, very orthodox way, very, very, very academic way, very algebraic way that is. Other way is to obviate all the algebraic work by simply replacing this variable x by some number. By some number. Another way we said was to obviate all this algebraic work, obviate, make it unnecessary, take it out, make it unnecessary, make it redundant, make it uh, unrequired, by simply replacing the x with some number. And that is called the plugging in method. Which method, which method should we do first? Let's do the quick and dirty method, word, which is the plug in method. In the real exam, I would not recommend that you do the algebraic method. There is no point in it. There is no bloody point in it. Nobody is going to give you extra credit just because you do the, you, just because you were you were you were a good schoolboy or a good schoolgirl and you solved the problem the way it was supposed to be solved, which is with the algebra. Because nobody actually looks at your work, and you're not going to get any extra point for it. Do you understand? You're not going to get any extra credit for it. So let's do that. Enough of the talk. Let's replace. Let's plug in. Let's plug in. Uh, x equal to two x equals to 2. So if x is equal to 2, our job is to replace x, which, which, we, are, which we are plugging in 2 here, replace this with 1 over x. So in other words, we replace it with 1 half. So here's our expression. Our expression would be x, which is, which is going to be replaced with, let's first write the expression. What can we do it? Right here, x will be 1 over x plus 1, 1 over x plus 1 over, over x minus 1, which is 1 over x minus 1. Because we are replacing x by 1 over x. That's what it is. We have we are to replace the x by the reciprocal of x. We're going to now substitute the value of 2 for x. We're now simply going to substitute the value for 2 for x. So here's what we have. We end up with 1 over 2 plus 1. 1 over 2 plus 1 is 3 halves. Because... 1 half plus 1, 1 is just 2 halves, 1 is just, one is just 2 halves, 
So one half plus three, one half plus four, or one half plus two halves is three halves, and then one half minus a one, which is simply two halves again, one half minus two half is negative one half. Two is going to cancel out. When we flip it, and it's just three over one, we end up with negative three. Negative three is what we're looking for. That's our answer. Our answer is negative three, but it's actually not negative three. I just realized the whole thing is being squared, which I left out. So the whole thing has to be squared. This whole entire thing has to be squared, and this thing has to be squared. And negative three is squared, it will become positive nine. And this positive nine that we arrived at is what we call our punchline. This is our punchline. That's what we're looking for. Now all we have to do at this point is to go through every single answer choices, every single answer choice that is, slowly, carefully, wherever you see x in the answer choice, replace it with, wherever we see x, we're going to replace it with 2, because remember x equals 2, we plug in x equals, the plug in, the value that we plug in for x is 2, wherever we see x in the answer choice, replace each x with 2, and keep on going until you find one answer choice that works out to be 9, and we, when you arrive at that answer choice, that's your answer, you're done. Let's begin, shall we? Answer choice A says, answer choice A says, x plus 1 over x minus 1 whole squared. Now remember, we're going to replace this x with 2. x is equal to 2. So we end up with 2 plus 1 over 2 minus 1 whole squared. 2 plus 1 is 3, so we end up with 3 squared on the top, and 2 minus 1 is 1, so we end up with 1 squared on the bottom, and 3 squared over 1 squared is just 9. There you go. Answer choice. Answer is A. We got lucky. We got lucky here. We didn't have to do much work. The answer turns out to be A. I'm not going to spend the time here to show you that all the other answer choices, if you were to do that, if you were to, and you should do that for your own satisfaction, for your own learning purposes, uh, to get the practice, and you will see that none of the other answer choices will work out to be 9. Only one, only five out of, out of, out of the five answer choices, obviously, only one answer choice is going to work out to be the same as your punchline, assuming that you don't, you haven't made any careless mistake, any arithmetic error. Now let's do the same problem in a classical way. It is not necessary, but we're going to do it for learning purposes. So let's do it on the top. Here's our expression. Here's our expression. We're going to replace x by 1 over x. So x plus 1 becomes 1 over x plus 1. Over x minus 1 becomes 1 over x minus 1. And remember, the whole thing has to be squared. I'm going to pick up speed now. We need the common denominator here. So if you want the common denominator, this one can be written as this one can be written as x over x, and this one can be written as x over x. So now we have the common denominator. We have the common denominator. So in the in the top we end up with one plus x, one plus x over x, and the bottom we end up with one minus x over x, whole squared. And then x is going to cancel out from the bottom, and what we end up is one plus x over one minus x whole squared. But notice the answer choice is written in a different form. This is for you have to make a transition from here to here. So let's let's continue. Let's make a transition here. One plus x is very straightforward. One plus x can be written as x plus one. That was the easy part. So that's the top part. That's the easy part. One minus x that we see there, one minus x can be written as we can take out the one negative one as the common and this can be written as x minus one. You see negative 1 times x is going to give us our negative x, and negative 1 times negative 1 is going to give us positive 1. So this thing is same as negative 1 times x minus 1. And this is being squared, and this is being squared. But of course negative 1 squared doesn't do anything. Negative 1 squared is just positive 1. So that's why it becomes positive 1. We end up with x plus 1 all squared over x minus 1 all squared, which of course can be written as x plus 1 over x minus 1 all squared, which is what, which is what we have here for a. But none of that was necessary, you understand? Let's go on to the next one, number 110, or rather 210. As I said, don't do the algebraic page, just plug in number. Just plug in a number and just solve it. And you should do it. You should do it on your own next time around. Do it. Do the problem again one more time. And this time, plug in three for x, or plug in five for x. Plug in some different number for x other than two, and do the problem on your own and, and make, get some practice. Do you understand? And of course, each time you plug in a different value for x, you're going to have a, your punchline is going to be different, obviously. But that doesn't matter. And then you, as you look, as you work through the answer choice A by replacing the x with the value that you chose for x, you will see that it will always work out to be 
what you're looking for, the punchline, because A is the right answer. Number 210 is a geometry problem. Number 210 is a geometry problem. We are given a picture here that looks something like this. X, Y, and Z. So this is X outside is X. Then we have a Y here. And then we have a Z here. We are told that this is right angle. They do not give this uh, uh, vertices name, but we're going to give them name so it is easier for us to deal with. So let's call this thing. Let's call this thing P, Q, R, S, and T. Just so it makes our life easier. P, Q, R, S, and T. All right. The question is how much is x plus y? X plus y. Where is x? X is right here. X plus Y. That's the question. How much is X plus Y? That's what they're looking for. Is there anything else with the tail? They must tell us something else. This is not enough. And they tell us that Z is 50. Z is 50. So let's begin our process, okay? Let's begin our process. We're going to look at triangle. Look at triangle PQS. PQS. It looks like this. PQS looks like this. Here's the P, here's the Q, and here's the S. This is X here. If this is X, then let's call this thing X prime. Okay, X prime, X prime. This we know is 50, and this we know is 90 degrees. Since this is 90 degrees, and that's 50, and since they have to add up to 180, which means this angle Z and this X prime, this X prime, this angle Z right here, this angle Z plus X prime, they have to add up to 90. But Z we know is 50, which means this X prime must be 40. This angle, this inside angle is 40. With me? Now if this inside angle is 40, then the outside angle must be 140. Because it's a straight line. That's it. We're done with X, now we have to work on Y. Let's work on Y. Let's work on the Y here. Now, look at the quadrilateral. Let's look at quadrilateral P, Q, R, and T. Look at the quadrilateral P, Q, R, and T. In the quadrilateral P, Q, R, P, Q, R, and T, we have this angle which is 90 plus this angle which, which is Z plus this angle which is also 90 what did I leave out? Oh, let's go in order. I left out Y, didn't I? So 90 plus Z, 90 plus Z plus Y plus other 90. And of course they have to add up to 360 because we know that some of the angles in any, some of the angles in any quadrilateral is 360. Some of the angle in any four-sided picture is 360 because a four-sided picture, because a four-sided picture, a four-sided picture it's nothing but a union of two triangles. A four-sided picture is nothing but a union of two triangles, the marriage of two triangles. And since each triangle has 180 degrees, a quadrilateral, any quadrilateral, regardless of what it looks like, any four-sided picture has to add up to 360. Therefore, the sum of these four angles has to add up to 360. We have 90 here, we have 90 here, we can subtract 180 from here, we get 180 here. We know Z is 50, we can replace Z with 50, we know Z is 50. And there we go, we can subtract 50 from both sides. If we subtract 50 from here, you get 130, which means y equals 130. We already know the x, x is 140. x is 140, y is 130, we are done. The question was how much is x plus y? The answer is x plus y is x is, x is 140, y we just found out is 130. The answer is the sum of these two angles, sum of these two angles is 270 degrees. And that's your answer choice D. Let's go to the next one, number 100 and uh, number 211. Another geometry question, 211.
What does, it, what does this word mean, obviate? We, we use it in the context. We said that by plugging in numbers, whenever we have an algebra problem, if you replace the variables in the algebra with numbers, we obviate the necessity of working, uh, of, of uh, treating that course, algebra course. We, we obviate the necessity of solving that algebra problem in the algebraic way. We take out all the algebra from it. It becomes unnecessary. It becomes a simple arithmetic problem. You understand? Obviate means to make something unnecessary, to make something redundant, to make something unrequired. We learned it on day number 52. Day number 52. Just type in GMAT vocabulary words. If you're interested in improving your vocabulary, just type in GMAT vocabulary words. Day 52 and watch that video. You will learn that word along with some other words. 211. The question simply is, what is the what is the what is the equation of line L? So here's our x-axis, y-axis. It goes through two and three. One, two, three. This is our line L. And the question is, what's the equation of it among the five answer choices that they give us? Which which of these five answer choices, which of the five equations that they give us, will depict this line? Let's find out, shall we? Well, the easiest, simplest, quickest method, the most economical method here, was, was, is to make use of the intercept. Make use of, here, make use of make use of the x and the y intercepts. Well, y intercept is right here. y intercept tells us that when x is 0, when x is 0, y has to be 2. 1, 2, y has to be 2. x intercept tells us that when x, x intercept tells us that when y is equal to 0, x has to be 3. x has to be 3. We're going to make, a, make use of these two, uh, these two bits of information and eliminate four answer choices. That's all it is. That's how simple it is. Let's look at answer choice A. Answer choice A says 2x minus 3y equals 6. 2x minus 3y equals 6. It doesn't matter which one we start out with. It really makes no difference. Which one do you want to start out with? Let's start out with uh, this y, y, y intercept. We're going to start out with this y intercept. Why? Because it's very, it's very simple here. Replace the x with Replace the x here with 0, replace the x here with 0, and if we do that, this 2 times 0 is 0, and it just goes away, which is why it's simpler. So, if we do that here, when x is equal to 0, when x is equal to 0, what we get is negative 3y equals 6, and that means y would have to equal negative 2. y does not equal negative 2. When x is equal to 0, y equals 2. This equation does not depict this line. Because if this equation did depict this line, then this equation would have told us that when x, this equation would have told us that when we replace x with 0, y works out to be 2, positive 2. Y works out to be here negative 2. We need positive 2. A is not the answer. Let's look at B. B tells us that 2x plus 3y equals 6. 2x plus 3y equals 6. Well, Again, replace with 0, so we get 2 times 0 plus 3y equals 6, which means 3y is equal to 6, which means y is equal to 2. y is equal to 2 the way it's supposed to be. So this is a possible candidate. We do not know if it's the right answer, but based on the taste that we're doing here of y intercept, we cannot rule out b. b is taste. Let's look at c. Let's look at c. c says 3x plus 2y equals Six. Again, I'm going to pick up speed here. So 3 times 0 plus 2y equals 6, which means y is equal to 2, because 6 divided by 2 is, oh, 6 divided by 2 is 3. It's 3. 6 divided by 2, 6 divided by 2 would be 3. y does not equal 3. When x is equal to 0, when x is equal to 0, y does not equal 3. When x is equal to 0, y is supposed to be 2. B is not, the C is not the answer. Let's look at D. D tells us that 2x minus 3y equals negative 6. Again, this is going to be 0 when we put in the x for 0. And we end up with 3y equals negative 6, which means y equals negative 6 over negative 3, which is positive 2. And that works. y is 2. 
So the D stays. D stays. Let's look at last answer choice E. Let's look at last answer choice E. E says 2x minus 2y equals negative 6. We replace x with 0. We replace x with 0. And what we find is that negative 2y equals negative 6, which means y equals negative 6 over negative 2, which is positive 3. And y does not equal positive 3. y has to be 2. E is not the answer. So now we realize, now we come to the realization that out of the five, three of them were charlatans. They were They were charlatans, they were quacks, they were quacks, they were imposters, they were imposters, they were not real McCoy. The contest is between this and this. Only two people are left in the ring, either B or D. So now we do the other one. Now we do the other intercept, that's what it is. It doesn't matter which intercept you start out with, it doesn't matter, you, you can start out with X intercept, you can start out with Y intercept. I like to start out with Y intercept because I, I like, I, I find it more fun to plug in x equals 0. Now let's do the other one. So now we can, have, we can oh I shouldn't have replaced, oh sh bloody hell, I shouldn't have erased D. D is the right one, D is the possible candidate. Bloody hell, I should start yapping so much. So let's replace now, let's replace y with 0. When we replace y with 0, x has to be, x has to be 3 x has to work out to be 3. Let's see if it happens here. So 2 times x minus 3 times 0, negative 6. And that means 2 times x is equal to negative 6, which means x is equal to negative 3. Does x equal negative 3 here? No, x is positive 3. x is positive 3. D is not the answer. The answer is B. The answer is B. And if you like, we can very quickly show answer is B. We can very quickly show that the answer is B. 2 times x plus 3 times y, which is 0, equals 6, which means 2x equals 6, which means x equals 3, exactly the way it's supposed to be. x is supposed to be 3, x is supposed to be 3, when y is 0. x is supposed to be 3, when y is 0. Just like, just like we found here. The answer is b, not d. Do you understand? That's all. That's all it is. I'm going to erase this picture. I'm going to erase this picture here so that we can learn these three words. An imposter, a quack, a charlatan is someone who pretends to be somebody who is not. He's a fraud. He's a fraud. He's not a real thing. Out of the five answer choices, we, write, we found right away that three of them were imposters. They were quack. And then, of course, we have to find the fourth one, which we found in the second round. I'm looking at the words here as to when we learn it. Whenever we learn this uh, this word charlatan, that's going to be the same day when we learn all the other words because they're all synonyms. So if we learn charlatan, then we must have learned quacks and imposters. I'm looking for it. Just can, it would be easier to look under I than a C because there are mo too many words with C, beginning with C. I'm going to look under I. There aren't too many with I's. Or even Q. What do you know? Q is going to be faster yet. O, P, Q. Quack. Day number five. What do you know? Day five. Just type in, just type in vocabulary words, GMAT vocabulary words. That is, just type in GMAT vocabulary words. Day five, and out will come pop out a video in which we cover the word quack. And I'm guessing, I'm assuming that is, that we also learned the word imposter and charlatan on the same day, day number five. I did not verify it, but I'm pretty sure we did because they are synonyms. Why wouldn't we? Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't we? Why wouldn't we have learned? The other two words on the same day. It's simply logical. You understand? It is logical that we would have we, that we must have learned the, these words on the same day. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay? I know.